Hello everybody, today we'll talk about what is an echo. Echo is a reflection of sound that arrives at the listener with a delay after the direct sound. Now the delay is directly proportional to the distance of the reflecting surface from the source and the listener. Greater the distance, greater is the delay. A true echo is a single reflection of the sound source. Now what is a perception time? The person's perception time is the minimal time required to perceive an echo. We know that echo is a reflection of sound and humans cannot distinguish a reflected sound from an original sound if the reflection occurred in less than 0.1 second. This is a limitation of the human ear. Now, we know the speed of sound at room temperature is 343 meter per second. We can actually calculate what is the minimal distance based on this minimal time. So, in 0.1 second, sound would travel 34 meters one way, or if you're considering a back and forth transmission, it'll be 17 meters both ways. So, a listener situated 17 meters from a reflecting surface can actually perceive the reflected sound and hence, you know, hear the echo. Any distance less than this, he'll not be able to perceive an echo because, you know, the reflected sound cannot be distinguished from the original sound. Now, what about reflections in room? Okay, we need to consider that echo is a single reflection. So in a room, you know, let's say we have walls, ceiling, floor, and also other objects like couch, curtains. All these objects are very close to each other and there are multiple objects and multiple surfaces. So sound has lots of opportunities to reflect. And in this process, you know, the reflections occur quite quickly and it, it does occur less than 0.1 second because the distance is small. The speed of sound is 343 meter per second. So it does occur quite quickly. In addition, there is also attenuation or damping in the form of absorption. So it is not possible to perceive an echo in a room, in a, in a standard bedroom with a bed, with the curtains, with wooden floor and so on. Now, what about reverberation? Now, there is a common misconception. Uh, you know, echo is, a reverberation is commonly referred to as an echo, which it is not. Let's understand why. Now, let's consider a rear reverberation chamber or a large empty room. Basically, an empty bedroom with flat floors, walls, and ceilings. Okay, now in this case, there are no objects such as couch, curtains. So, there are only surfaces, flat surfaces. Again, sound is going to reflect quite quickly. In this case, there are only pure reflections and uh, sound, you know, reflects off of multiple surfaces and would arrive to the listener from multiple directions. So the, the final sound that a user or a listener would hear there would be a mixture of all these reflections. And, you know, this, like, it is not possible to dis distinguish anymore between the reflected sound and the original sound. It's just like one, you know, complete sound or one prolonged sound. And this effect is called as reverberation. And reverberation is not echo because echo is one true reflection and not multiple reflections. So now let's listen to how, uh, you know, let's perceive how a reverberation sounds like. So I just spoke the word hello twice and then applied reverberation effects. And you can listen to it. Hello. Hello. So if you listen carefully, you can't uh, clearly hear the word hello. It's just muffled. It's because all the reflections are mixing with the original sound and then creating one prolonged sound. Now, let's talk about echo. We know that echo is a reflection of sound that arrives with a delay greater than 0.1 second. And a true echo is a single reflection of sound source. And the single reflected sound can be heard separ separately from the original sound because of the distance and because of the perception time that you already know. And the minimum distance to perceive an echo is 17 meter as we calculated earlier. Now let's perceive how an echo sounds like. Again, in this case, I've spoken the word hello and then applied echo effects to it. Hello, 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 hello. So as you heard in the audio clip, you could clearly hear separated hellos and they were not mixed together, unlike reverberation. So in this case, the first sound was the original sound and all the other sounds are reflected sounds. And yes, the amplitude keeps decreasing because energy, you know, it's not infinite energy, the energy decays gradually. So what are the applications of echo? One common application is sonar, uh, known as sound navigation and ranging. It is used in ships to detect underwater obstacles, measure the depth, or calculate speed of sound. 
Unfortunately, Titanic didn't have sonar, so it had an unfortunate incident. Now, the working principle is the same. Sound waves propagate from the transmitter, hit the obstacle, and re return back to the receiver. In this case, the transmitter and receiver are the same unit or the same sonar unit. And the obstacle can be anything. It can be the seabed or fish soles, etc. Echolocation also occurs in nature. Now, it is a biological sonar used by several animal species. Now, for example, bats, you know, bats hunt at night. Uh, so they're flying and they emit sound waves. Now, they do emit ultrasound, which we humans can't hear. But those ultrasound travel, uh, you know, hit the obstacles and then return back and they hear it. So they can actually get a sense of the distance based on the reflected sound. So again, in this case, the bat is the source and the receiver because it's emitting ultrasound and then, you know, registering those reflex reflected sounds. So to conclude, echo is a reflection of sound that arrives at the listener with a delay after the direct sound. And a true echo is a single reflection of sound source and most importantly, echo is not reverberation. All right. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.